question is, what are going to be the advances in minimally invasive surgery, including robotics? So we've assembled two experts, an old expert and a medium expert, is that right? Or you know, in age, is that He's right? a very smart expert. He's, he's, I didn't say, see, I didn't go into intelligence. So Dr. Chetwood and Dr. Mihailovic. So, so tell me, you know, Randy, from your perspective, what are the advances in minimally invasive surgery, specifically for mitral valve? Well, a number of advances. I think one thing, of course, robotics, but just minimally invasive techniques. Smaller incisions, doing things with endoscopes. Uh, we're developing different knot tying devices, things of this nature, so you can do it a fast, faster. Um, and also, we can do you know maze procedures for atrial fibrillation along with the minimally invasive operations. And that's with it's sort of low tech, high tech, small incision, endoscope do the operation with either direct vision or using endoscopic vision. Then the next level is using robotics and that kind of technology uh, for mitral valve repairs. I've done over 700 mitral valve repairs and to me it is the way to do it and hopefully it will be the way of the future because the visualization is so good. Tommy, what are your thoughts? I mean, is that, I mean, obviously he's had tremendous experience in the field. No, absolutely. I think there was, there was an era when Dr. Chidwood was the only person, uh, one of very, very few people sure. who had truly a faith in robotic, minimally invasive mitral valve surgery in particular. I think the biggest advance now in cardiac surgical community is in the fact that this is becoming embraced as a standard proven approach for treatment of mitral valve disease in particular. And not only mitral valve disease, but also diseases uh, like the tricuspid valve, atrial fibrillation, and I think coronary artery surgery as well. And I think what we will be seeing, what we saw here, and what we'll be seeing in the future is going to be a wider spread and acceptance of uh, this robotically assisted approaches. So, Randy, is it, is it due, I mean, because I know, I think Tommy's right that you've been sort of the, the guy out there crying out, and, and because of your status, people have, have accepted your technique with that, but has the advances come in instrumentation? Younger surgeons picking it up, all the above. Uh, you know, what, why? Why do we now begin to get this really groundswell where it's coming along? Well, I think first off, patients want it. Yeah, know, absolutely. A, a, a number of people have are doing minimally invasive surgery, even though only about 20% of people are doing minimally invasive mitral surgery in the United States. Right. But those patients who have that surgery, they want that surgery. Number two is the younger surgeons are much more. Are willing to adopt these new technologies. You know, they've come through the computer age, and basically they see that if it's not going to be done surgically and get a what we consider a better result than some of the catheter-based techniques, then they won't be in the game. So, if there were a hundred mitral valve repairs being done at the Cleveland Clinic five years from now, what percentage will be done minimally invasive? At the, at the Cleveland Clinic yeah. for isolated myxomatous mitral right. valve right. disease more than 80, 85 percent of patients will have minimally invasive approach. And I believe that this percentage will, 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 become, will, will increase over time. So I, I think you've made the case, and, it's, and I think it's appropriate that with developments and in instruments, uh, surgical techniques and minimally invasive mitral is, will be the way it's done in the future. What about the aortic? You know, we've got a lot of things going on in the aortic space, <laughs> to put it mildly. Where is, where is minimally invasive aortic surgery going to be? Well, certainly at our place and the Cleveland Clinic, we've done minimally invasive aortic surgery for a long time through right. small hemisternotics. People in the past tried to do them by taking a rib out and do it that way, but we found that either doing it through a small mini sternotomy or a second interspace incision. But some of the new technology or some of the new valves are being developed that basically are pericardial type valves that can be deployed uh, in rapid fashion, decreasing the pump time. And we know the durability of those valves because they're the same valves that we've used, except they just have a different mounting technique. So I think that this is going to continue as well. I can't see a full sternotomy for a fairly thin person with a uh, the aortic valve is right there. What do you think? Tom? Well, I think what we're going to see in the future when it comes to the treatment of aortic valve disease is we're going to see a much broader spectrum of options for patients. The wisdom is going to be to choose the right therapy for the right, right. patient. Uh, I think there is obviously very exciting developments in the percutaneous treatment for aortic valve disease. Newer surgical valves are, are coming out that are easier, they're being easier to implant. 
better visualization of the apparatus. Some of us are even developing ways to approach them uh, using a robotically assisted approach. So I think there is a very, very a lot of a lot of movement in that particular field. And, 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 and that's it's very exciting to me. Now the aortic valve doesn't just sit there. It's got this tube called the aorta attached to it. So if you have so say you've got a conjoint malformed aortic valve with a little bit of an aneurysm or you've got aneurysmal enlargement of the uh, uh, ascending aorta, what do you do? And that's, that's a situation where a more conventional operation might come down or can you approach that with minimally invasive? Well, you can do some of these minimally invasive. Some people are doing minimally invasive. I probably would do sternotomy light, which means just uh, a full sternotomy and not spreading the skin. Uh, not spreading the, the, that much, but there are some individuals uh, doing uh, arches through a small incision. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think it depends on a on a person' experience. The I think the ultimately the what we're looking to do for a patient is the best operation for a given patient being done by a surgeon who feels comfortable with the choices that he or she is presenting. So, so you're really talking about a specialization within your field, absolutely, okay. absolutely. where you have a valve cardiac surgeon. It's not a guy who's doing or a gal who's doing cabbages and doing this that sort of, per se. Is that correct? I mean, I, it seems to me that's what you've got. The key do. is to be doing a lot of these operations. Right. It's like anything, it's playing baseball or whatever. The more you do it, the better you get, and you get to a certain standard of where you have low complications faster operations and the patients do better. So I think in time, you know, the person doing one to two mitral valve repairs a year is gone. I think in time it's going to come to people who specialize in different parts of cardiac surgery. Is this going to influence, and final question, is this going to influence training of cardiac surgeons in the future? I think it will influence the training. It is also going to influence the practice of cardiac surgery. I think there are several undeniable trends in cardiac surgery. First trend is that we're broadening the spectrum of therapeutic options for right. our patients. Right. Most of those options are highly technically advanced mm -hmm. and require a specialized skills. Mm -hmm. And the other trend is that we are really uh, working very, very hard on improving the quality of our outcomes. So the combination of variety of different treatments, most of them highly sophisticated, and a demand for high, high quality will inevitably result in a uh, focused efforts uh, and a growth uh, of cardiac surgery in a specialized centers that will be suitable to treat those patients and it will also be suitable to train young surgeons in these procedures. I think what we'll see 15 years from now is going to be a decline in a number of places that offer cardiac surgery but we will see an increase in the volume and those centers who are going to be specialized to offer certain features. It's very, that's an interesting comment. Well, I, I appreciate both of you doing the interview and so I appreciate be you being, uh, being persistent in the field like you have been and influencing many people. And Tommy, you and your colleagues have done a great job, so thanks for visiting. Yeah, that's us. what the fun part is, is to see these young surgeons take off of this. It's a very exciting time in valvular heart disease, both from a surgical and a interventional standpoint. Absolutely. So I think that's, the, that's good. Thanks for joining me. Great. Thank you very good. much. Good. Thank you.